week we're going to learn about the point slope formula. The point slope formula is actually just a different version of the slope formula that you already know. What we're going to do is we're going to change the left hand side to be a fraction. So we're going to put it over 1. So now we have m over 1 equals our slope formula. And then we cross multiply. In this direction we have 1 times y2 minus y1. Anything times 1 is itself. So that's the same as just y2 minus y1. We put down an equal sign and now we go in the other direction. We have m times x2 minus x1, which I'm going to leave just that way. This is called the point-slope formula because you only need to know the coordinates of one point and the slope to get the equation of a line. But here I have two sets of coordinates. I have a y1, x1, uh, x2, y2. So I'm going to get rid of the x2 and the y2, replacing them just by plain x, plain y. And now I have a formula that only depends on knowing the slope and the coordinates of one point. This is the point-slope formula. You may also have seen it written this way. The only difference is, instead of calling your point x1, y1, we call it a and b. So we now have two different tools for writing the equation of a line. We have the slope-intercept form of a line, y equals mx plus v. To use it, we need to know the slope and the y-intercept. And we have the point-slope form, which is y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1, where you need to know the coordinates of a point, x1, y1, and the slope. So now we'll do some examples. In example two, we're asked to write the equation of the line that has the given slope and passes through the given point in both point-slope and slope-intercept form. Well, the key thing to notice here is that we have a slope and a point. And if that's what you're given to start with, then the obvious choice to use is the point-slope formula. I'm going to start by writing out the formula. Every time you use it, you should write it first. Then I'm going to label on my point which coordinate is x1 and which one is y1. Now this is just a basic substitution problem. We're going to leave the plane y and the plane x in the equation as is. When we get to y1, we substitute the value of y1, which is 2. When we get to m, we substitute the value of m, which is negative 1 third. And when we get to x1, we substitute the value of x1, which is 6. This is our first answer. This is the equation of the line written in point-slope form. So I'm going to label it with a little ps off to the side. Now to get the slope-intercept form from here, we don't have to start all over again. Just notice that the slope-intercept form is written so that y is alone. So if I can do some basic algebra, I can solve for y in this particular equation, and then it will be in slope-intercept form. You will always begin on the right-hand side. Notice you have a negative one-third in front of parentheses, so we're going to distribute that negative one-third to both parts. Negative one-third times x is just negative one-third x. Now when we have to multiply the negative one-third times the minus six, we're going to remember to put the six over one, make it into a fraction, and do basic fraction multiplication. That means multiply the numerator times the numerator and the denominator times the denominator. So we have a minus one times a minus six, which will become a positive six. And on the bottom, we have three times one, which is three. Now that constant term can be reduced. Six divided by three is of course two. So I'm gonna fix that. And now there's just one more step towards getting y alone. Right now, y has a minus two attached to it. We're gonna use the opposite operation. We're going to add two. And of course, what we do on one side have to do on the other. So now we have our final answer in the slope intercept form. So I'm gonna label this with a little si. It's important to understand that these equations of a line are just two different names for the same line. This equation here, when graphed, gives you the exact same line as this equation down here. You can see in the top graph, I've got the point-slope version of the equation of this line, and it creates the red line. And then down in the bottom, I have the slope-intercept version of the line, and notice you get the exact same line. In the next example, we notice that again, we've been given a slope and a point, making the point-slope formula the logical choice. So begin by writing the formula, label your point, and substitute. 
Now we've got to be a little bit careful with our substitution this time because both x1 and y1 are negative and we're substituting them into a formula that already has a subtraction sign there. So it'll look like this. So as you can see, I've written my substitutions carefully in red, and what we notice then is that we have a double sign issue. We have minus a negative in both sides. Well, when you subtract a negative number, that is the same as addition. So in each case, we're going to change the minus a minus to just a plus sign. This is the point-slope version of this equation. Now to get from point slope to slope intercept form, it's always a two-step process. First, distribute the slope, 2 times x, 2 times 3, then get rid of the plus 1 attached to the y by subtracting 1. And this is now the slope intercept form of this line. Again, just a different name for the same line. In part C, again, we start by taking a look and notice we are given a slope and a point, meaning we're going to begin with the point slope formula. Same steps as always, label your coordinates, substitute appropriately, being careful of those negatives. Next, get rid of the double signs, and here we have the point-slope form of the equation. To get the slope-intercept form, we always do the same two steps. Begin by distributing the 1 fourth to the x, and then the 1 fourth to the 8, remembering to put the 8 over 1. Multiplying the numerators, we have 1 times 8, which is 8, Multiplying the denominators, we have 4 times 1, which is 4. So we have plus 8 over 4. 8 over 4 can be reduced to 2. And now the second step is we need to get the y alone. It has a plus 2 attached to it, so do the opposite, subtract 2. Now in this case, when we subtract 2 on both sides, it cancels on the left, but it also cancels on the right. So in this case, our equation doesn't actually have a y-intercept value. Although, remember, the number that would be sitting here would be plus 0. So 0 is actually the y-intercept, but it's not necessary to write it. This is the slope-intercept form. And now we have one last example. Now, you can't just be in the habit of always doing point-slope form. You want to make sure that you know what information you're given to start with. Here, we're given the slope and the y-intercept. Well, we have another formula for writing equations of a line called the slope-intercept formula. That's the appropriate one to use in this case because of the information that we're given. So I need to remember that the slope is my m value, the y-intercept is my b value, and all I have to do is substitute. Just like that, we're done. This is the slope-intercept form of the line, because notice it is solved for y. And in this case, there's no need to go and write it in a point-slope form as well. However, if you really wanted to, here's how you would do it. The point-slope form requires a slope and a point. We already have the slope, we know that that's negative 4, and we do have a point if you think about the fact that the y-intercept equals 2. I've set up just a quick xy-axis here. Now, the y-intercept being 2 tells us that this line would pass through the point 2 on the y-axis, which is right about there. That being the case, we are able to read the coordinates of this point. This point is located at 0 on the x-axis. If you read down here, these are the positive numbers, these are the negative numbers, this is 0, and it's up at y is equal to 2. This gives us the point 0, 2. Label the point x1, y1, and then substitute as usual. And this would be the point-slope form of this line.